certain it's possible to have French counterparts if they ever came up with the money committed to completing smart track. The problem here is not infrastructure, the problem here is the provincial government, which is bereft of funds and can't commit any real money to any programs. Okay, thank you. Uh, the discussion is open now. You know, when we talk about transit and congestion, I had to spend like $35 to get in the cab because the transit system was pretty slow. And I think that with the amount of money that we spent on politicians' pension, the amount of tax breaks that are given to people who donate to the Liberals, Conservative, and New Democratic Party, for them to fix an election between their parties and exclude everyone, I think if we stop those, those contribution rebates that are given, and if we take that money and throw it into transit, I think the people of Scarborough Gilwood, the people of the city of Toronto, the people of the province of Ontario, and the people of Canada would definitely support that. It's time for us to make the politicians accountable and let them not spend our money unwisely as they've done for so long. And it's been done by the Liberals, the Conservative, and the New Democrat alike. They are no different. They are just politicians trying to put politics over on you. Let's fix transit. Say no to the liberals, conservative and democrat. What about that help? The grocery marts with all the um, GMOs in our food. That's not very healthy. Well, food, food is definitely an issue. But right now we're speaking on the issue of transportation. But I definitely agree with you that the government, and well, not the government, because the government is good at politicians. So they're allowing, politicians they're are allowing, yes. Well, so that's what we get when we only listen to liberals, conservatives, and democrats. <laughs> the people's <laughs> voice is not heard. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead, Laura. Thanks. Um, you know, I was speaking recently with residents around the Markham and Lawrence area. Many, there's many high-rise apartment buildings specifically in that area, many people who work shift work. It's, uh, Scarborough has been neglected when it comes to transportation and, and um, investment here. Those people working shift work do not have a 24-hour bus running and often have to take cabs. And these are people working minimum wage jobs. So certainly, um, Something that I am personally committed to is making sure that they have a more elsewhere bus that runs 24 yeah, hours, 24 as well as and, and speaking of municipal politics, Olivia Chow was someone who um, ran on a platform to um, look to increase bus services um, in these types of area where it is needed most. The um, issue of the Scarborough subway is a live issue on the streets. Um, and I think there's a pretty broad consensus that um, something has to be done pretty time soon. Um, I don't disagree mm -hmm. with Laura that, uh, that mm -hmm. Scarborough has um, not been uh, properly serviced with uh, the growth of infrastructure over the, <coughs> over the last number of years. Um, and I think uh, there is a, a general consensus that, that something needs to be done. There does seem to be some squabbling as whether it's smart track or whether it's subway and, and how this plays out. Or a 24-hour bus, uh, you know, like, like, I think it's sort of, let's just get this done. I think the uh, provincial government uh, moved forward a bit, uh, the, um, taking the go trains and turning them into a half-hour go trains, I thought that was good. I think that there should be some uh, uh, move towards electrification. If you're moving towards electrification, you're going to have to do great separation, great separations in our riding, uh, Galloway, Morningside, uh, Poplar Road, uh, Scarborough Golf Club Road, all have to be done in order that viable. If, if that worked, then and once you got that, then you could probably turn it into an every 15 minute service. Uh, that would improve uh, the lives of people who start doing quite, uh, quite dramatically. So all of that is going to need a serious amount of money, a serious amount of commitment. Um, the, any federal government, it doesn't matter what strike, is going to be guided by uh, the local politicians and the local uh, levels of government. Um, and then it's just a case of finding the money and finding the uh, will to, to do uh, those sorts of things. But within your platforms, are there any direct commitments to the Toronto Transit Commission, the uh, TTC? Uh, Laura, in your, when you answered the question, you did mention a number, uh, $4.9 billion. Um, can you explain that number? Because in your platform, uh, it does say that uh, the NDP would invest $1.3 billion annually over the next 20 years for all municipal transit funding. So is there specific money set aside for the TTC? not just the municipal pool across Canada? Um, well, out, of, out of that number, $7.7 billion is committed to uh, Toronto Transit. Um, we have um, said that in the, between the provinces and the municipalities, they can use that money to fund the planning that they um, you know, should deem fit based on their local assessments. Um, so yes, we have, we have committed to 
to long-term predictable funding for Toronto. It's quite transparent. The Conservative government was the first uh, level of government other than the city of Toronto to speak to our subway system. We committed first, we committed fast, and we committed hard for it. Again, I reiterate, the squabbling that goes on is probably a factor of the province having no money. But we have committed to a subway system. It's short and sweet. We have strongly committed to it. We've committed to fast track, or smart track, I'm sorry. We think those are both viable solutions. I think, I, I agree with John, I think there has to be more discussion as to how to implement uh, the road bed, but I think the public uh, road bed meeting where the, where the buses go, where the street cars go, where the subways go, the uh, mass transit system. But I think the fact of the matter is the public needs it, the public wants it, the public has requested it, and, and deserves it. Chuck, can I ask a question? You're talking about investing in all this, and John and Laura, they decide to agree with you. But let me ask you. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, when, when you invested all this money into a system that has so much problems, have you seen the amount of breakdown there was on the Toronto Transit system this year alone? So you're saying that each of your party would invest yeah, in the Toronto Transit system. Yeah, we're going to have to sit back a little bit there. You're each of your party, party. We're, we're almost a Green Party member. Yes, yes. Each of your party will invest a large amount of money in an infrastructure that needs fixing. Why do we That's fix why it? That's why we invest. We, no, you don't. You give better but service first, but and you, you keep the money service aside. Service comes with funding. No, it's not about money. That's why I'm here, because you all think it's about money. That's it why is. you're the vote. A smile won't get you It's yeah. about humanity. You need a bus. Not a smile. Better service for the people. Okay, That's hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Laura. So what I'll say is that the Conservatives have been in power for, for 10 years, and I'm just hearing about their commitment to fund a subway as of last year when the municipal elections popped up. Um, we need a government who is committed to long-term, predictable, stable funding for Toronto Transit. And, you know, before we even talk about subways, Let's, let's talk about fixing some of the problems. We don't have a downtown relief line. We don't have buses that run 24 hours for commuters. So let's let's start look, let's, let's start funding for some of the, those simple problems that we can fix immediately like and, and start long-term planning for a, a subway growth. If you want a downtown relief line, you'll have to sacrifice your Scarborough line. That's what your own funding why means. Will, why do you you can't have people to work together as in unity? work with the private sector, the public sector, and government come together and say the people are important. So let's come together of one mind that even if we're liberal, conservative, new Democrat, and we spend more of our time Kevin? fighting each other, Kevin. let's build let's 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 a better Kevin. service for the yeah. people. So, Kevin, Kevin wants to speak. Go ahead. Kevin, go ahead. Oh, I was just trying to get him. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, there's, a, there's a whole raft of uh, things that need to be 
absolutely done and done sooner rather than later. Okay, last comment from anyone here? Yeah, I, I want Canada's clean water back. Okay. Safe drinking water, okay. power to the people. So let's do this. We've had a uh, healthy discussion, if not uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Yes, it is. Yes, very soon. Yeah. Let's move on to our closing statements now. Uh, uninterrupted closing statements. This will be done in reverse order of the opening statements. The candidates will have 30 seconds each. People of Scarborough Gilwood, I am not against the liberal, conservative, or new Democrat voters. I embrace them and I serve them fully, equally, as I serve the left fortunate. We ask the voters of Scarborough Gilwood to vote for real change for everyday people. Yes, Canada is voting for a prime minister. Let Canada choose the amount of MPs will represent each party and then choose the leader of that party as your prime minister. But in Scarborough Gilwood, for real change, you must vote independent because you're independent. Thank God you. God bless us. Vote Kevin Clark. And let's move next to Kathleen Holden. Hi, first I want to thank everybody for listening and I hope you guys get out there and you go vote as this is a very important time as our air quality and our soil quality and our food quality is not the way it used to be in Canada. We're using, we're using too many GMOs and our air is just really bad. So please consider green because we care about you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And uh, John McKay. Thank you, Francis, for the opportunity and thank you for hosting this. Uh, I hope your mute button didn't get worn out. Uh, possibly could have been exercised a bit more, but uh, um, I want to thank the people of Scarborough Gilwood for honoring me with their uh, uh, their vote over the last uh, 18 years and six elections. Uh, it has been an honor to have served. Um, it has been an honor to, I hope, contribute um, to the uh, better of Canada, and I hope to be able to do that again um, on your behalf. Thank so, you. if you want to vote for real change, vote for the Liberal Party. Thank you. And from the NDP, Laura Kessler. My friends, I am very excited to be part of the change that we need in this country. With your support, we can get this country back on track. And just like most recently Albertans, who put their trust in the NDP, we can make that change. And together we can elect Tom Mulcair as Prime Minister and have a government with a conscience and continue Jack Layton's legacy and build a Canada where no one is left behind. Thank you, Laura, and uh, finally, Chuck Conkle from the Conservatives. Thank you, Francis, and thank you all for uh, listening to the program. I want to thank all my, my counterparts for providing a very stimulating evening. Um, more critically, we talk about change and the need for change, and the two of my principal opponents speak of change. Let's realize that the incumbent has been here for 18 years, and I have not seen the change that should have been in place for someone who's had 18 years to make that change happen. I think it's important to realize in election time you vote for Chuck Conkle, Conservative Party of Canada, go Jay's Gold. <laughs> yes, that we can all agree on, right? Go Jay's Gold. Thank you so much for uh, taking part and thank you for watching at home on the local campaign. Airtimes for other debates can be found at rogerstv.com. I'm Francis D'Souza from City News. Bye for now.